Aloha and welcome to our video on the ocean floor features. In here we will discuss the three main regions of the ocean floor. We'll talk about continental margins. We'll explain the formation of new ocean floor at deep ocean trenches and abyssal plains. We'll revisit the idea of seafloor spreading and we'll revisit the hydrothermal vents as well. Okay, so when we're talking about the ocean floor, we've broken that up into three major regions. The first one is this continental margin here, and that's going to go from the edge of the continent out a little ways. And we'll talk about where that distinction is in the next slide when we talk about the continental margins a little bit more. We also have these mid-ocean ridges. And here in the Atlantic, we notice that we have this mid-ocean ridge out here in the middle of the Atlantic, hence mid-ocean. And then the third and final area of the ocean floor is what we call this ocean basin floor. And that's going to extend from the continental margin out to this mid-ocean ridge. So if it didn't have a mid-ocean ridge, it could extend all the way across to the continental margin on the other side. So we can kind of see that in our picture down here below, but we'll explore this area, this continental margin, in the next slide. Okay, so let's talk about the continental margin real quick. In our picture, our continental margin is going to extend from the beach and it's going to go out into the abyssal plain a little ways. This continental margin can be broken down into three different regions, so let's take a quick peek at those. The first one is this continental shelf, and that's going to be this shallow part of the ocean that's right up next to the continent. It's going to decline a little bit, but it's not super steep. It's just kind of a gradual decline, but it's going to be marked by a shallow ocean. And this area is where we have a lot of productivity. This is where we do the bulk of our fishing. So they're very important regions. Now, the continental shelf gives way to what we call the continental slope. And this is going to be where we have a down steepward progression of the ocean floor. And that's going to take us down to about the abyssal plain. Before we get there, however, we do have this continental rise which is going to be a gradual sloping again. So if we add the continental rise, the continental slope, and our continental shelf together, that's what we get is our continental margin. And these areas, like I said, are very productive. They're economically important. So they're very important areas to know the ecology of, but also the economy of. Now, one of the key features of this continental margin are what we call submarine canyons. And submarine is exactly what it sounds like. Sub meaning under, marine meaning water. So these are our underwater canyons. And they're created in much the same way that our canyons are created out here in the desert. And what we have is we have this turbidity current. And this turbidity current is just going to be an area of water which is nutrient rich, which makes it dense. And because it's denser than the salt water, it's going to want to go down. It's going to want to sink through the salt water. And it flows much like a river would cutting into the continental shelf and forming these submarine canyons. Now, not to be confused with a canyon, we can also have these submarine trenches. And here we have the Puerto Rico Trench, which we can see in the picture here. And what this is, is this is where we actually have a plate that is being subducted or going under another plate. So in this case, it's the North American plate and the Caribbean plate, they're interacting in a subduction zone. And because of that, what we're seeing is this plate's more than likely traveling down under, and it's causing the volcanic activity that's gonna form some of these Caribbean islands. We can see another example of a trench, and that would be the Mariana Trench, which actually marks the deepest part of the ocean, which is what we call the Challenger Deep. And if we were to set Mount Everest in there, it still would not reach sea level. It would be entirely submerged. So that's how deep these trenches can get. The Challenger Deep is 11,000 meters below sea level. Okay, so it's the deepest part. Mount Everest, on the other hand, is only about 8,800 meters above sea level. So you can see that the oceans are deeper than the mountains are taller. Now, when we get out into the abyssal plain, one of the things we notice is we get out there, we see that it is going to be kind of this flat wasteland. And the reason we call it this flat area is because quite simply you can see we have the topography underneath. We can see that the oceanic crust is going to have this topography. We're going to have mountains, we're going to have valleys, we're going to see all of the same topography. The problem is, is we have these layers of sediment. So over millions of years, we have this sediment flowing into the ocean. And that's when we go back to our little 
sand example that we showed earlier, when we dig a hole on the beach, what we notice is the bottom of it is going to be flat. And if you tried to build a sand castle underwater, that sand castle would just kind of level itself out due to the motion of the water inside of the hole. And that's what we notice here in our oceans. At the base here, we have all of the sediment that's just going to lay down into these layers. So when we get to the bottom of the ocean, it is indeed, it looks to be kind of flattened out like this. And the reason for that is just all of this sediment has leveled out. Okay, so let's talk about some interplate underwater geology here a little bit. We talked before about a hot spot. That's an area where you have this magma plume that's rising up to the surface and it can form a volcano in the middle of a plate. And the Hawaiian Islands are a great example of this where we have this hot spot, it's forcing magma up and we're gonna have this volcanic activity. We can have an underwater volcano and eventually if it breaks the surface of the ocean, we end up with a volcanic island. Now this volcanic island, once it moves past the hot spot, it's gonna change its geology a little bit. And we're gonna talk about the three different paths that it can take. The first one is gonna be this one right here. It'll turn into a sinking island. And remember, we have this huge volcano that's sitting on the ocean crust. What's gonna happen is that's gonna cause it to push down that added weight and it's gonna actually sink down into the crust. It'll cause the crust to sink down as well. So that's what we call it as a sinking island. If that continues over time and we get weathering and erosion, we can get a flat top. And if we look over here, we can see that it's this flat topped underwater mountain, and that's what we call a guy out. So once it moves over the hot spot, weathering and erosion can take in, it'll sink a little bit from the weight, it'll flatten out at the top, and we end up with a guy out. Now the next thing it could do, a little different path, is this one here. And this is where we see this growth of coral and this reef around the sinking island. So we have the sinking island again, but we're gonna have this barrier reef of coral. And you can see in the side picture, we can see this coral is growing up on the sides of the slopes of this mountain. So as it's sinking down and the coral's still growing, it's gonna do that until we see that it, the island itself is sunk below and we end up with this ring of coral we call an atoll. And inside is gonna be our lagoon and it's generally gonna be a very sandy bottom, nice interior lagoon with a coral reef all around it and that's what an atoll is. And then our third is if we don't see anything really much happening and it just kind of sinks down below the surface, then we end up with a seamount. You can see it here, but we can also get seamounts if the volcano moved past the hot spot before it had a chance to break through the surface. So these are our three different paths that a volcanic island can take. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about oceanic crust. We can form new oceanic crust at regions of seafloor spreading, and we talked about this one. This is where we have two plates, and those plates are gonna be moving away from each other, so it's a divergent boundary, and this allows magma to rise up and the formation of new rock, new crust material is formed that way. So this is how we make new ocean floor. Now remember the earth isn't getting bigger, it's staying about the same size, so that means that this plate, as it's moving away, ultimately somewhere is going to have to be subducted. And as it gets subducted, the plate melts away and we get a little bit of volcanic activity going on. So this is how the earth maintains its size, but we can form new oceanic crust here because of seafloor spreading. And then as that seafloor is moving across this way, ultimately it'll get subducted down and the earth stays the same, but this is how we can make new seafloor. Okay, let's talk a little bit about a hydrothermal vent. A hydrothermal vent is where we have this magma here below the surface, which is gonna be heating up everything, and we'll have a little area where it's broken. Now, it's not gonna necessarily be a volcano because we're not gonna see magma rising, but instead, what we're seeing is this pulling in of ocean water through the bottom. It gets superheated, pops out through the top here into what we call a black smoker. And within a black smoker, we can see that there is an abundance of chemicals. We have carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, methane, iron, um, magnesium. So we're seeing a lot of minerals. It's a kind of a chemical rich water that's coming out here. And you can see the reason we call them black smokers is because that's what they look like. There's this big cloud of black smoke kind of coming out of the bottom of the ocean floor. 
and we found that there are actual bacteria that can take some of these chemicals and through chemosynthesis create food, create sugars, much like plants do with sunlight. Okay, so that's it for our video. We'll go into some of these topics a little more in detail in the lessons. Um, as always, good luck on your quiz, and we'll see you in the next video.